Last year, some fellow RIA course members and I decided to go sailing again this year, organizing it ourselves this time. We rented a San Odyssey 490 from my longtime charter company JF Yachts. I'll discuss the vessel in more detail later. In this video, I'll share our sailing adventure in the Cyclades. Destination We aimed for the island of Milos, planning to visit our other islands like Serifos on the way back. Everything depended on the weather, especially the wind. Sailing north against the Meltemi wind is no easy task, even for more experienced sailors. Weather I monitor the weather weeks in advance. Before our arrival, the Meltemi has been blowing for at least a week and was expected to continue until our first day on Milos, after which it was predicted to die down. I use the Windy app, which allows comparisons between different forecasts as they can vary from model to model. It's always important to consider local conditions, which I read about in my excellent guidebook. This is the book. Here you found the area. Then you go, let's say, to Serifos, 9798. And then you check the guidebook. However, weather forecasts are never entirely reliable and Poseidon rewarded us with a change on a third day, promising very strong winds and high waves. This forced us to stay an extra day on Serifos, which turned out to be a great decision as we all loved the island and promised to return. Logistics I arranged the sailboat rental directly with the charter company in Piraeus, completing the formalities on site. Most of us came by plane and stayed first night in the nearby hotel, one crew member lives in Piraeus. Provisioning Provision was handled by a crew member who lives in Piraeus and has his own vehicle, which made activities on the first day much easier. He shopped according to a pre-agreed list. I must stress that quantities should always be reduced by at least 20% once the list is finalized. We set sail around 5 p.m., delayed by damage from previous renters. They had broken the passerelle, which had to be replaced. Despite the late start, we enjoyed four hours of brilliant sailing. Near Piraeus, the Meltemi can already show its strength with gusts over 25 knots resulting in extreme speeds in calm seas and beam-rich wind direction. Despite rift sails, we exceeded 10 knots several times. Before sunset, we anchored in Anavisos Bay, which offers good holding despite limited protection from the Meltemi. The first night at anchor in gust winds usually doesn't offer much sleep and we had to fix some technical issues like an accidentally activated bilge pump. After googling we found a solution and got a few hours of sleep. Next day will be long. Auxiliary. Yeah, and auxiliary is needed for, for USB. We set sail well before sunrise for a 12-hour journey to Milos. The wind calmed as forecasted and we occasionally used the engine. We 
We reached Milos with an average speed around six knots. After dolphins and many large vessels, We were first greeted by the picturesque village of Klima. Followed by the main port of Adamantas, where we anchored 150 meters east of the pier. The pier was crowded by evening due to Greek holidays. We took a dinghy ride to explore the town and enjoyed a delicious dinner at Fish Tavern. Thursday. After a leisurely morning, the day was dedicated to a less demanding sail around Milos. With two stops. The first was to see the natural attraction of Sikia Cave. And the second was for a lunch and swimming break at Zigrado Beach. We ended the day anchored on a bay on the west side of Oliegos Island. Fourth day. A windy day was forecasted, which became evident in the middle of the night, but our anchor held well in shallow water. We continued our journey soon after sunrise, hopefully heading to Serifos if weather will permit. The sail took longer than expected, with changing wind directions due to the island's geography and significant leeway. We overcame all challenges, mostly without seasickness. The final test was med mooring in Serifos Limani with gusts over 30 knots. Thankfully, we performed the maneuver flawlessly.
Now we are in harbor. Yes. Midnight and the wind is still there. Fifth day. With forecasts predicting winds over 40 knots, we decided to stay another day on Serifos. We explored the island, visited the famous Hora on the top, where the wind gusts were even stronger. and found a phenomenal local tavern with delicious traditional dishes. Sixth day. The wind weakened just slightly, but we had to continue. Sailing in about 30 knots of wind and over 4 meter waves, we headed to Kea. Where we plan to anchor in Conduros Bay, which is well protected from the Meltemi. Unfortunately, or fortunately, due to our two-day stay on Serifos, we had to skip Kitnos, which will surely be a future destination too. Seventh day. All good things must come to an end, but we had one more full day of sailing with a stop at the Temple of Poseidon near Sunion Bay.
Near Piraeus, we again reached incredible speeds. How fast we are going? 8.2. Making the most of the day and almost sailing into Alimos Marina on sails. Are we ready? ready. Okay, okay. <laughs> we completed the return formalities that evening, spending one last carefree night on the sailboat. The next day we sadly had to part ways, with each crew member returning to their part of Europe, except for the lucky one living in Piraeus. Sailboat. The Sun Odyssey 490 is perhaps the best sailboat I've sailed on till now. Why? Despite its wide beam, the passages from the helm to the bow are extremely useful and do not compromise upwind sailing performance. Its width allows ample space for eight people in the cockpit, even in windy, wavy conditions with significant healing. The sailboat is technically designed for 10 plus 2 people, but I prefer not to fill every available berth, so the 7 of us enjoyed real comfort. The furling mainsail system works perfectly from the cockpit, thanks to the screw winding system similar to headsails, preventing slipping, a common problem with endless ropes. Additionally, the sailboat was equipped with a generator, air conditioning, and water maker. Now you have opened the air condition. Uh, this is the generator. Start and stop from here. After two, three minutes, yes, you can start from here the water maker. This one is the water maker. However, the generator was too weak to support all air conditioning systems simultaneously only allowing one of the four sectors to operate at a time. The water maker, on the other hand, could produce up to 30 liters of water in one hour, useful when you would be far from civilization. I'll definitely rent this type of sailboat again, perhaps without the generator and air conditioning. After all, sailing is like camping, not staying in a hotel. Costs. With seven crew members, the cost per person, excluding travel to Athens, was around 750 euros. If you fly from an airport within a three-hour flight and book flights well in advance, with a hotel night in Athens, the total cost would be just over 1,000 euros, including all food and drink in whole week. Conclusion Will we go again? <laughs> Without the slightest doubt. Perhaps for a longer trip, like 14 days or, new, or even 3 weeks, with a slightly modified itinerary. We could spend the first week leisurely sailing to Milos, with the wind on our backs, and use the second week to cross to Peloponnesos and Monemvazia, returning via the Argolic and Saronic Gulf, where the winds and waves are less intense. Check my other videos as well. See you soon! <laughs>